So a while back, I posted a video about why I quit the airline and everyone had a lot to say about it. You know, that I made the right move because teaching was really my passion and I thought being a CFI was a better quality of life than being an airline pilot compared to doing the five legs a day, especially the regional level at least. Didn't really want to do the five legs a day, didn't really want to have to commute, wanted to be home in my own bed every night. A lot of people had a lot of negative things to say about it and thought I made the wrong choice, so I figured I would make this video and show you guys a day in the life of a CFI. And oh, by the way, I'm out in Arizona at the Lufthansa Aviation Training Center, just checking out their pool area where the students hang out. This is not your typical flight school. So the typical day of a CFI, right? Alarm goes off, roll out of bed, find a shirt, smells like it's a couple days old, but Gross. should work. Go ahead, jump in the car before the sun even comes up, drive to the airport, get out there, brief with your student, walk into the airplane, go fly, debrief, rebrief, go fly, debrief, rebrief, and then just repeat that a whole bunch of times. Eventually, you're hungry, and it's four o'clock in the afternoon by that point, so lunch is served. Mm. Okay. After you take the two minutes to eat lunch, then you go ahead and rush back out to go fly, debrief, brief, fly, and then at like 8 p.m. you finally catch a break, but pretty much everything is closed, so you can't go get a real meal, but you do have to hang out at the airport because you have a night cross country you gotta wait for. Then you finally get the night cross country done, you come back, and yeah, it's about 11.45 at night, and good news, you got a whopping eight and a half hours before you have to be back at the airport to do it all over again tomorrow. And for your almost 16 hours being at the airport, you flew a total of 6.1 hours, made about $168, and you get to fly airplanes that have well, more hours on them than Sully does. But you know what? It doesn't have to be that way. Meet Miguel. He's a CFI at LATUSA, Lufthansa Aviation Training, out here in Goodyear, Arizona. Think of CFI life is like, you know, five legs a day or five flights a day, kind of like, you know, what I was doing in the airline that I didn't like. And now here, you're, you have a really busy day today. You're doing three yeah, flights. Three flights now. That's a busy <laughs> yeah. day for us. Uh, six in the morning. Okay, so you got here at six and you've done your first flight it's about nine something now mm -hmm. and you guys came back you swapped and you're going out on your second flight yeah and so about what 20 minute break between them yeah or so? we have 30 minutes break uh, yeah. for the next one we got 15 minutes break but the good things we got the plane for us so we can just adjust the breaks as we need yeah as long as we don't delay yeah. too much so it seems like they've got about two airplanes for every instructor here Pretty um, much, yeah yeah so <laughs> equipment's not really in short supply no. you're not really pushing that and they're very so, new so they'll break down so that's yeah. good too so three flights you're gonna be done by what time today so today with the flights probably around 11 something then we'll have some lunch we'll debrief i'll get the great shoots done so so usually a normal day we we are out quite a decent time so yeah we don't, we don't put the uh 10 ish hours out of people yeah there, so. Yeah, so, and you're limited to about five hours a day anyways. Flying, yeah. yeah. So we're here maybe about seven and a half hours, something like that yeah. a day. So. No, that's really not too bad at all. So since Miguel has such a super packed day with three students on his schedule, I figure we'll go ahead and let him fly till about noon or so and then catch him after lunch. So you've just finished up your last flight or your last debrief mm -hmm. rather. So you had three flights to stay all together, mm -hmm. which isn't crazy uh, for mm -hmm. a CFI schedule. So basically... I mean, the day when I was a CFI, my a normal day for me was wake up six, seven in the morning, dash to the airport, eat Cheerios while I'm on the way, mm -hmm. spilling food all over myself, run in, quick brief, fly, debrief, fly, debrief, fly, and do that. No time for lunch, fly five, six flights, maybe seven flights in a day. And just crazy, crazy schedule. You know, you're there from like six, seven a.m. till midnight sometimes doing night cross countries. But today you showed up at about what time? Six in the morning. Okay, so kind of an early morning, but nothing mm -hmm. crazy. And then you were finished with your last flight by? I would say by, uh, before one yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah, and then lunchtime? Yeah, like one, one yeah. something. And then debrief with your students? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're done. Yeah, exactly. So you get to be out of here by about 2, 2.30 mm -hmm. or so. And so that's a much easier schedule yeah, it is. than... <laughs> Most CFIs, anyway. We have a briefing, so we got 50 minutes until mm -hmm. we go outside to the plane. That's plenty of time to talk about our kind of, kind of structure of a briefing where we have mm -hmm. to do weather notums, what we can do that day, in yep. order to the specifics of the lesson, too. 
So it's good because the students have already done all the performance, everything, all the calculations, weighting balance, uh, they've mm. already done the pre-flight of the plane. So you yeah. don't have to do anything like mm -hmm. that. Then of course you check it um, and make sure that everything is good, they've done a good job. But uh, all that's done, so when you brief, just brief, get all that done, the plane mm -hmm. is for you the entire time, so you don't have to worry about any airplane And changes. so you're staying in the same airplane all yeah. day, mm -hmm. which so is really nice, because you're not swapping mm -hmm. airplanes, you're not dragging your gear in and out. No, exactly. Yeah. You can arrange your uh, brakes the way you want, you can swap at any other airports mm -hmm. if you need to also. Yeah. So you normally fly with two students then? Yeah, usually it's one in the back seat and one okay. that it's doing the lesson. So you do your brief and mm -hmm. then about seven something in the morning you take off your yeah. first flight. Mm -hmm. That was about an hour and a half. An hour and a half, now phase one. Yeah. yeah, sometimes flights are a bit longer, two, two hours and ten minutes. Okay. So two hours and ten minutes, so only two flights. Yeah. Because we're limited to five hours of and flying a day. So. It's funny how you guys count flight time too, because mm -hmm. it's by European standards. So yeah. mm -hmm. they block out and block in. Mm -hmm. And but by FA standards, you can log the time basically engine start to yeah. engine shutdown. Pretty much. Yeah. But they're logging the time just when the airplane's moving mm -hmm. and until it comes back in. Yeah, and so. also you have to log the uh, takeoff time, landing mm -hmm. time, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So not for us, but. Yeah. No, that's kind of interesting. So. Hour and a half flight, and then you came back about a thirty-minute break, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. grab some food, grab a snack, exactly. run the bathroom, whatever, decompress a little bit, and then another flight. Mm -hmm. And so you guys either swap here back at base, or you might swap at an out station with yeah. the front seat back seater. And it's very easy because most of the students are on the same lesson, so it's mm -hmm. just pretty much get there. you get into that dynamic, just repeat it again. So it gets very comfortable, very yeah. very simple. Nice. And everything's awesome. very structured in the syllabus, so you don't have to find the way to do whatever you need to do mm -hmm. for that lesson. So. Yeah. When they come here, they've already been in ground school for like a year. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're already pretty well prepared. So mm -hmm. you're just really brief them for what you're going to go do and then go fly the airplane. Mm -hmm. And then debrief them about what they yeah. did. And we don't have to worry about any theory. Just we yeah. just hit the key points of every kind of maneuver, or whatever we're doing at that time. Just kind of a bit mm -hmm. of a refresher, nice. in a way. So we didn't have to spend a lot of time on the ground explaining yeah. things or doing ground schools and stuff. Gotcha. And then your second, after second flight, you came back, had a break for about 15, mm -hmm. 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. We yeah. can we can have even up to 15 minutes if we want to. So we'll yeah. be flying that long. They give us at least a 50 minute break besides yeah. 30 minutes. So you can schedule your own breaks as you mm -hmm. want. You just let dispatch or scheduling know or something? Yeah, no, as long as yeah. you bring the airplane back at the time it has yeah. to be back, that's good. And of yeah. course, if you can't, you get, just give them ETA and just yeah. they, they'll... Uh, but yeah, it's usually quite easy, crazy going. We, yeah. Yeah, planes don't break down at all. Mm -hmm. There's very very little uh, issues with They're them. They're brand new. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. so they, they have always an airplane available. So nice. So then you have your third flight, you came back and you had mm -hmm. lunch, and then how long was your debrief about? Debrief, usually we schedule for an hour, sometimes it takes a bit longer. Uh, same thing, we all brief together, we all debrief together, they're on mm -hmm. the same lesson, so it's very easy. Yep. Um, and we schedule for an hour, sometimes it takes uh, less than an hour, sometimes it takes an hour, yep. depends on how much to talk yeah. there is. Now, mm -hmm. you don't always have three students, that's kind of like the max, almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you only have one or two students for the day, mm -hmm. and you're done by, say, you come in at six and you're done by 11, mm -hmm. do you just... If you don't have any other things to do, you usually kind of use the time to catch up with manuals, things, uh, administrative mm -hmm. work. Uh, usually, yeah, you, you can just go home and finish yeah. your day. Yeah. So you get out pretty early, mm -hmm. you're done, you're salaried, so it doesn't matter how mm -hmm. many flights you fly, you're paid no matter what. So you're not worried about what your paycheck's going to be mm -hmm. if you don't have students. Mm -hmm. So what do you do after that then? You go home, kick yeah, back, watch relax, some TV, try to do hit the trails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's your favorite spot around here in Goodyear? Uh, well, I live a bit more north. Uh, okay. That's a good thing about Phoenix too. You can, commutes are not very bad, so yeah. I, can, I can live a bit away from uh, Goodyear and still hit no traffic. Okay. Which is nice. So it takes me about 30 minutes to get home. Yeah. Not very long for, for living in North Phoenix. North Phoenix is quite beautiful. We got a lot of mountains, a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of newer areas too. So yeah, I like that. I like the area where I live. There's some yeah. mountains I just go hike sometimes, uh, take mm -hmm. my bicycle and mountain bike and so so there's a lot of things to yeah. do. Sometimes going out for dinner, there's kind of in the middle of everywhere, so I can mm -hmm. always choose where I want to go for yeah. this for leisure. So Well awesome. Well, it's a pretty sweet day. It's a pretty sweet schedule, mm -hmm. anyways, yeah. compared to a lot of CFIs out there. Because mm -hmm. this isn't really the typical CFI schedule. This is pretty unique to mm -hmm. LAT out here in Goodyear, yeah. this particular school, where they, I mean, they make it so you can have a career here. You can stick yeah. it out. You don't have to just like 
show up, build your time, and no, leave, very comfortable. you can stay for 5, 10, 20 years. I mean, some CFIs mm -hmm. have because it's, yeah. it's a good paying job and it's a relaxing job. I'm very happy yeah. to work. Uh, you don't dread your day before yeah. you even start it. Something like it happens in some other places. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of people that stay here, they're happy, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they take pride in what they do, which yeah. is good. That's also the atmosphere that other mm -hmm. places where people are just there because they have to be there. Yeah, how does it compare to the places that you instructed at before here? Well, it's totally different. Yeah. It's totally different, much more comfortable. So I think the, the difference, sometimes I think about that when I come yeah. uh, to work, I'm happy to yeah. come to work. Yeah. Now the places wouldn't be the same every, yeah. every day. You your can last, say the same thing every yeah. day. Your last flight school didn't give you dental insurance, did they? No. <laughs> or health insurance or 401k or anything like that. Yeah. No, it's pretty crazy that they mm. do all that for the CFIs here. And it's awesome. I mean, it's, it's how it should be. It's how everyone mm. should do it. You got to take care of your employees and take care of your pilots. And it's cool that they do that here. So well, I appreciate you letting us kind of tag along and check out your day. Um, but I'll let you get home. I know we've already kept you late. You know, it's almost 3 o'clock. This is a late day for you. So I appreciate it, Miguel. Awesome meeting you. It's a pretty sweet place That's you got here. Too. Yeah, we'll catch you later. So to wrap this up, what I was looking for when I left the airline was basically this, right? Good quality life, good pay, good benefits. Now, typically being a CFI looks more like it does at the beginning of this video, right? Where you're working long hours, low pay, no benefits, flying terrible equipment, and just not really great working conditions. But it doesn't have to be that way. And I did my research and I kind of cheated a little bit. I found the very best flight school in the country to work for, and I came out here and made some videos about it to really showcase this avenue in aviation, right? There's a million different roads and routes you can take in aviation, but if you're not really eager about living out of hotels and raising your kids via FaceTime and living out of a suitcase, maybe being a CFI and taking this route as a career could be for you. They provide awesome benefits, awesome pay, awesome quality of life here, and being a CFI is a really rewarding job, at least for me. So airline life can be great, totally recommend it for some people if it works for you, but for me, this really works and it might work for some other people too. So I wanted to come out here and showcase that for you. If you're at all curious about learning more about LAT out here in Goodyear, the link is in the description below. It's probably the best place in the country. You're going to be really hard pressed to find a better flight school to work for. I did kind of cheat when I made this video and found the very best place to work, but either way, check them out. It's definitely worth a shot if you're looking for that aviation career where you want to fly airplanes, you want to be a pilot, but you don't want to live out of hotels. And there's so many great pilot jobs out there and they pay really well, but a lot of them involve the hotel life. And that just wasn't for me. So either way, guys, that basically sums it up. If you got any questions, absolutely leave them right in the comments below. And you guys know what to do. If you can't fly every day, fly at mikehelf.com. We will see y'all next time. <laughs>